Welcome to the Totem Robotic Arm Electronic Supplementary Kit Tutorial. In this kit you will find all the needed baseboards, function boards, assortment of cables, as well as Totem mechanical parts, a DC power source, and Totem tools for making the assembly. Also you will find a short quick start guide which, which shows you all the steps needed for making the assembly. So we'll start by assembling mechanics first. All the mechanical parts are in a separate bag, so you can take it out. First, we'll uh, insert nuts into appropriate places in the beam. So if you follow the quick start guide, it shows you where exactly you need to place the nut. While it doesn't show you the other side, it's exactly the same but mirrored 180 degrees. So if we follow that logic, we can mount it exactly the same and then just rotate the beam. You can use totem screwdriver to center the nuts center. Then we'll take spacers and insert them into the nuts. We'll use black spacers here, which are 8 millimeters high. If it becomes difficult to screw the spacer, check if, it, if the nut is exactly in the center of the hole. Here. Now we'll screw two hole brackets to hold our fixture in place. Again, insert nuts. And then take a couple of bolts and screw them in place to hold two whole brackets there. Okay. Now mechanics are mostly done, we'll mount baseboards. Please note that there are two different types of baseboards in this kit, the X2, which is the regular totem baseboard, and X3, a Bluetooth enabled one. It has an extra blue antenna on the right side of the board, so we'll start with this one. We'll take white 7mm spacers and use them to screw the baseboard in place. You can use four sets of spacers in each corner of the baseboard to have extra stability. In this case it's not really needed, so we'll use only two. Now we do have baseboards in place, so what's left is just mounting the function boards. We'll start with the power board. It's the function board 30, and we'll mount it on top of the X3, the Bluetooth baseboard. Next comes the DC power board. It's a function board 53. It goes in the middle. And lastly, the servo function boards, 48. While the function board stays firmly on top of the baseboard, we suggest you use included nuts, I mean bolts, to screw function boards in place. Now 
Now you'll notice what's left is the motor adapter board. We'll mount it on top of the robotic arm that's already assembled. So let's do the wiring. You'll notice that we have uh, two black cables and one set of uh, red cable as well as some extra power cables. We'll start with the totem bus cable. It's ver very easy to connect them. You just find the black matching connector and just push the the connector in place. It might be a bit more difficult with the middle board, but you can use totem screwdriver again and just push the connector in. The totem bus principle is based on the daisy chain, so you can always expand your totem network with new baseboards. Because each baseboard has two connectors, so you can easily expand the network anytime you want. Here. So the red cable goes to the DC function board, to the motor adapter board. So we're mostly done with the assembly. Now we'll just take an already assembled robotic arm and just push our electronics assembly to the side of the robotic arm. You'll also use two bolts to screw the board in place. We'll insert them right where the two hole bracket is. Then we'll take a couple of bolts. And just screw it in. Again, if the bolts don't want to screw themselves, just use the back of the totem screwdriver to center it. Here. So we'll mount the motor adapter board. It's best if you mount it somewhere here. It's also shown in the instructions booklet. So we do have space here. So we'll use a set of nuts and spacers to make the same mounting system like on the baseboards previously. Again, we'll use black spacers here. And we'll use the remaining two bolts to mount the board in place. Here. Now what's left is just wiring everything up together. So first we'll take the extra power cable and connect it from the power function board to the servo function board. It is used to supply extra current for servo motors. Then we'll take the furthest third servo motor cable and use an extender cable because it doesn't really reach. Please note the color of the cabling. The brown wire, which is ground, should connect the black one. The end of this extender 
should connect to the third channel of the function board with the black connector facing from you. Then we'll take the second servo motor wire and connect it in the same way. So the brown wire should be furthest from you in this case. And third cable as well. Then we'll take the extra DC motor wire and just remove the ends of it to expose the copper. It helps uh, to ship the cables without bending the ends. So now if you'll take the Phillips screwdriver and screw the cable to the terminal block. It doesn't really matter how you screw it in because it will only reverse the motor and we can easily change that in our software later. You should do the same with the other end. Prepare by unscrewing the screw so the wire has a place to go in. And just insert wire by wire and screw the terminal in. Make sure that the wire stays in place and doesn't fall out. That's it. And you're done. At this stage, the Totem robotic arm should be assembled together with the electronics. So we'll try to turn it on and see what happens. Use the included power adapter and just connect it to the function board for power. Please note that the red LED should turn on, indicating that the power is on, as well as the X3 baseboard red LED should start to blink, indicating that it awaits for the connection from the smartphone. You can find Totem app in Play Store on Android just by searching for Totem. Now we'll try to connect to the Totem robotic arm that we assembled previously by using the Totem smartphone app. You can find it on the Play Store. So start by pressing connect to establish a connection to the Bluetooth baseboard. Uh, then you can press explore to see the list of connected baseboards and their function boards. In this case, we have a servo motor board connected as well as a DC motor board. If you enter to the sub menu, you can see the short description of the function board as well as their controls. So if you want to try it and test them, you can do that with the included sliders or buttons. Next, you can see the pre-built models here. They are used for a more permanent control. So in this case, we'll try to open robotic arm and we can see that it's already filled with widgets that we can press and interact with. So it has uh, three sliders for servo motor control and two buttons for the DC motor control for the grappling arm. If you want to add more widgets or more capabilities, you need to press edit here, then press plus sign here. Then a list of possible widgets are presented and then you just drag and drop new ones to the workspace. Alternatively, you can create new models here by pressing plus sign and then making a new name for it. So let's say it's a arm. Then press plus sign here and drag and drop new widgets to the workspace. To assign a function to the widget, 
you need to press the pencil sign. Then you can either name your widget, set uh, additional parameters such as an orientation, but you need to press add topic here. Uh, then a list of function boards is presented here. So you need to select the one you like. In this case, we'll try to control the DC motor. So I'm selecting the DC motor function board icon here. Then press next. Then you see the list of capabilities of the function board and you can select it from the list or just by clicking on the relevant connector. In this case, the connector is the red one. So pressing next displays you another screen with the additional controls so you can limit the range of the motor, invert the action or set the custom topic here. So we're done here. Then we'll press save and pressing play button activates all the widgets. So if you have made it successfully you can control the DC motor here.